What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for clicking on the video, and today we're going to be playing Kamiko on the Nintendo Switch. Alright, so this game popped up on the Japanese eShop, I want to say a few hours ago. It was right after the Nintendo Direct, earlier at 6 o'clock Eastern. So, I had no idea this thing was coming, and I, when I saw it, had no idea what it was but it looked really interesting, so I had a couple extra yen in my Japanese eShop account. I decided, why not, let's check it out, and from what I've seen so far, it's really, really cool. Um, it's sort of like a throwback classic game, um, sort of calls back to adventure, action adventure, like old school RPGs, like A Link to the Past or something like that. Now, it's not the exact same style, but it is very similar um, aesthetically and like the way you move around the world and, and the combat, I want to say, to a certain extent. And it gives you the option to choose between three different characters when you start the game. There's like sort of a, a warrior, um, a ranger, and then this is sort of like a, a rogue type character. All three are girls, which I think is really interesting and, and pretty awesome too. Uh, we're going to go with the warrior character here first. But the other two, um, I'll tell you a little bit about in a second here. Let's take a look at this. It says, <clears throat> Oh child of the transient world, Abrupt though this may be, thou art summoned now to the realm of the dead. Thou should know that the gates connecting thine transient world and all realm of the dead have been sealed by demons. Demons. <laughs> if there goes on, thine transient world will become rulest by said demons, and humans will be led down the path to destruction. Before you is the Imperial Regalia, the blade of the Kusungai. <laughs> Kusungi. This weapon has been granted to thou because amongst the Shrine Maidens you hold a special power. <laughs> this, is, this is actually pretty sweet. Hear my words, O child of the transient realm. Become the Kamiko who will vanquish the demons and release the soul on the gate between worlds. <laughs> I, I don't think she has a British accent. Or sounds like uh, Gandalf, but that's just kind of how I hear it in my head. So this is, this is the look of the game. You kind of run around, there's really only two main uh, things you do. You, you dash around and you attack. So it's very like rhythmic based. Um, you're constantly moving around, attacking different enemies. Uh, those little pickups that I just picked up are like health, uh, like heart sort of things. And the world has like switches and stuff like that, but it's a stage based game. It's not really like open world like A Link to the Past was. You'll probably hear me like refer to it a lot <laughs> um, in this game. But I've only uh, really played a few, I want to say like t the first 20 minutes of this game. So basically just running through with you guys from what I've seen. From what I've seen, I really really like it, and I think it's worth, uh, if you haven't already made, made a Japanese eShop account, just, you know, I think it's worth making one just to check this game out. Um, especially now, right before Mario Kart, there's like a little bit of a lull in, in uh, games coming out, especially on, like, um, the North American eShop account. So if you're, if you're looking for a good title right now, this one is definitely something to keep your eye on. Um, so there's like a lot of different things, like I said, in the in the in the world right now to uh, interact with, and this is sort of like one of those crates that you can move around and helps you push switches and stuff like that. See, like a link to the past. There I go again, calling right back to it. Um, there's a crate, and then you're like when you kill these enemies. Here's another really important thing: when you kill these enemies, you pick up these energy pills or these energy orbs, and you'll see that in the top left corner of the screen and uh, you refill that pretty quickly but that is also responsible for charging your sword attack which I will show you in just a second after I toss this little orb here. So there you go, I'm charging it, it's just like in every Zelda game like the sword charge attack um, so it kind of costs those energy points to do. Uh, you need at least 50 to do them, you get them pretty quickly so you can use this pretty often but you need those same energy points to basically open the different chests and activate uh, the different save points and sort of like uh, teleportation spots that they have throughout the world. So there's like a lot of backtracking, uh, a little bit of puzzle solving, and a ton, a ton of action in this game. So if that's like sort of what you're looking for uh, right now, a game to sort of grind through uh, in a way 
this is definitely going to be that game. So I just activated this is going to be one of those portals. It's also like part of progressing through this level and it also activates a save so I can come back here and save if I need to, if I die, um, it's not going to be an issue. <laughs> Bro, I never get the timing on those things. The enemies in this game are kind of interesting, I think. Like there's like what looks like flying uh, one-eyed pigs. Like those things right there, little uh, mushroom people, uh, which seem to be like sort of the tougher type of enemies. Uh, a lot of them only take really about one hit, but those guys take two hits. Um, so yeah, there's like there's a lot going on in this game. Um, it doesn't look as complex as it actually is. I think it's from what I've seen, kind of deep. You can get kind of fun with the combat. There's a com uh, combo system, as you can see. Um, that you build up, and I'm not exactly sure what the main benefits are, I haven't really gone into it too far. There I go, I died. But it's not a big deal, because like, if you do die, uh, there's, I think, infinite lives, it's not like a sort of game over, it doesn't have a game over system, I think as long as you saved, you're fine. Um, and then when you do, when you come back, there's no penalty, you just kind of have, um, health all over again. So it kind of makes you play the game very bravely, which is kind of fun. Um, it's not... I wouldn't call this a roguelike, even though it plays a lot like one, but uh, if you do like roguelikes, then you might be interested in just like the way this game plays, uh, because it's definitely not a game that you start over. Because uh, in the beginning of the game, when you saw you pick between three characters, um, you can, and so so every, like there's three different uh, save slots in each profile and then within each save slot are those three different characters so you basically have your own save slot and you can come back and play the game again with each different character which I think adds a lot of replay value. I haven't played, I've played pretty much only with this character, the like warrior type character and then there's the, uh, the other girl with the, uh, a shield and she's kind of like a rogue type tactics character. She seems a little bit more difficult to play with, but a lot of fun to play with. She throws her shield and she has like a little sword that you swing around as uh, as the shield is in the air. So that's gonna be come back, or that's gonna be cool to come back to and check out if I end up enjoying the game, which so far I really am. So far it's really it's really a lot of fun. It's only 5,000 yen on the eShop. I don't know if I said that already. But that's uh, that equates to like five dollars, so it's definitely worth five dollars. I'm not sure how long it is, but it seems like it's got an interesting story, and I so far am having a lot of fun with it. I mean, I want to say I put in, like I said, 20 minutes plus this let's play, and it's still pretty cool. And when I was playing it on my own, I was playing in handheld mode. Right now, I'm playing on the pro controller, as you can see, and it plays perfectly well both ways. Obviously everything feels great on the Pro Controller, I don't think I've played anything that didn't feel good on the Pro Controller. So, uh, yeah, and then this is also is like, it just feels like such a great game to play in handheld mode, to be able to pull out anywhere and sort of take out of, you know, if you're waiting in, at the DMV or whatever, if, if you're at school or if you're at the airport on an airplane, it's just one of those games you can pick up and, and like, oh, like, you know, grind through a level real quick, or see how far you can get, be your last sort of um, score or whatever. <clears throat> I think it's pretty cool. I don't think there's a scoring system in this game. <laughs> so you can't give me too much crap because I haven't played it too long. So yeah, like, um, right now what I'm doing is I found like this orb in that chest, and I have to bring it back to where I brought the other orb in the very beginning of the video. So that's going to open up a door where we can progress through. Um, but the thing is, if I get hit, I drop this thing, and then oh, I just messed it up. So I just dropped it accidentally instead of placing it where I needed to, which means that it basically teleported back to the chest, um, which isn't a big deal. You can do that as many times as you want, but the whole point is when you're holding it, you can't really attack, and you can't dash. So you're just kind of helpless running around hoping that you don't get hit, and it's not too hard, at least not right now, the early stages of the game, but I'm kind of hoping that these mechanics develop, and, and even just for the first level, the way they're introducing like the different types of ways you do play the game is pretty is pretty cool. Um, they're using that sort of old style play as you learn, there's no like tutorial menu, um, 
it really did kind of take me like a couple minutes to figure this all out. Like I didn't just know how to do this stuff. So um, it's it's a game that's gonna take you a second, sort of. So I wouldn't say it's too challenging, but um, it's not easy, especially your first time through. And uh, I can't say too much about the level variation right now, uh, but when I did beat this level, and hopefully we'll get a peek into it once we get through this, I think we're almost through it, we can get into the second level and we'll at least have time to take a look at it and not play through some of it. Um, I don't know, honestly, if I'll be good enough to get through it all, but we'll see. Hopefully I can get to the save point before I die. Enemies really start building up. And what's interesting, too, is like I said in the beginning, there's only two uh, real attacks on... Or no, there's only two real, like, button commands on the controller, and that's, like, to dash and to attack. And you can set it in the profile, and it's actually set like this by default, so that, um... Y and Y and B, or no, Y and A on the controller are attack, like these two right here, and everything else is just dash. So it doesn't really matter uh, if you panic and you press the wrong button, chances are there is no wrong button. Uh, everything is just going to be dash and get out of the way, which I think is really smart um, on the developer's part. I don't remember, I was like talking so much, I don't remember if I brought the key through that door. I think I did, but there might have been a secret that I had missed over there. Which is another thing too, is like there are secrets in this game which I can definitely appreciate being a kid who grew up in the early 90s, playing like, you know, early Nintendo games with tons of secrets, and Doom and all that stuff, so. But did we... Did we activate all of the save points? I honestly can't remember. It's alright. It's still fun just like going through the game and, and fighting. Like I could literally play this for a couple hours just because it's so fluid. The combat, um, dashing from enemy to enemy and just whacking everybody. So I kind of wish though it doesn't have rumble. It'd be really cool if it if it did have some sort of rumble. Um, so you can save on command, which is pretty cool. It would be a lot cooler I think if you could save. Um, or if you could, if it, if it had rumble in the controllers, I really like how, like, uh, Graceful Explosion Machine uses its rumble feature. Um, that's, like, one of my favorite parts of the game. It makes you, like, really in, er, it really makes you feel, like, every shot, every kill, um, and it just brings, it brings the whole gameplay to the next level, I think, which is what the whole point of HD rumble is. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get through this, because this is getting silly boots. I think I might have missed something here. Yeah, there's one more, and it's somewhere around here. I think it's somewhere in the top left area, I'm pretty sure. And it's probably in like a secret area. There's a chest over there in that corner. I don't want to check that out. What is that? That is something I've never seen before. I think that was a piece of health. There we go. Alright, let's see what this is. Ah. Oh, cool. There you go. I just got an extra heart piece. Very, very nice. I did not know that you could actually get that mid game. Uh, no. There we go. Saved. Going back towards the start portal area. I think we are. Now there was more to do. I'm guessing it's past in this area somewhere. So we'll hang out up there. I'm like, I, I can't believe I can't remember where that portal is. It's like somewhere here. But you can see, like, you know, this is just the very first level, and there's just so much going on. Um, as far as like figuring out what to do. Um, it's not like very straightforward. I, I said it was an open world and this definitely isn't an open world, but it's like pretty, it's pretty uh, decent sized map for like a single level area, especially a level where there's like a ton of backtracking and puzzle solving and stuff. So pretty, um, I'm pretty happy with 
with that, like the whole layout and setup of the game, the way the game sort of feels. There we go, what's this? There we go, we found it. It's in a little secret area right behind a bush. So it's typical, like, old school classic secret like that. Um, and I remember playing games back in the day where, like, I would be stuck for hours because I just missed something super silly, um, like that in the corner. Um, or like a door that I just kept walking past. But, um, yeah, we're just going to pop through that teleport right there. And then this is cool, like, this is, this is always really rewarding, um, and pretty interesting. I love when games do this. Like, so, this is sort of right, right before the boss fight, um, usually it's after a boss fight where you get your, like, reward, but, your reward your reward, <laughs> um, but they give it to you before the boss fight to help you out, so even though I'm pretty sure we're going to die if I don't, if I don't get some health, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go with the health here because I always, I always go with health, I don't know why, probably because I suck and I need that extra little bit, a little extra bit of luck, but you can also get more um, points to store your energy for like um, opening up chests and using your power attacks and stuff, so. Okay, so this boss fight is a little different. It's pretty interesting. I really like what they did as far as the uh, tactics go and like the puzzle solving of it <laughs> because there is puzzle solving in it. Um, so what you're gonna see is I can't really attack the boss until he activates these switches which is pretty interesting um, for two reasons. One, because the console that I'm playing on is called the Switch <laughs> and that's just a constant theme throughout this entire thing. And two, uh, because you don't normally see that in games like this. So, uh, I think that's really cool. Especially in a modern classic game. It just kind of shows, like, it makes you think a little bit more and it adds a little bit more boss uh, fight to the strategy. So, one thing though is I think you have to do them in time or else he resets the cycle. Which can be kind of a pain in the butt uh, if you have to do it like multiple times. And yeah, there he goes. So that's like two in a row. And he might even kill me before uh, before we finish it. But it's okay because this game is a lot of fun. So let's see. Jumping from shroom to shroom, switch to switch. Yeah, these like these little like minion mushroom things aren't too threatening. They just kind of like wander around and don't know where they're going. It looks like they don't even have eyes. So yeah, that you gotta like find the red orb when it spits it out, and like that's his weak spot, which is kind of cool. It makes him like a little bit of an easier boss. I mean, the really the only time that he's really threatening you is when he's jumping around like this, which he does jump faster after every attack cycle, and also when he's shooting out those like when he gets mad after you do like do 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 after you do do some damage, um, <laughs> and he starts spitting out all those fireballs. So. There's the second round of vomit, vomiting boba, is what it looks like, right? It's like boba. Um, so yeah, there you go. Hopefully this is his last rager. Third time's a charm. Whoa, he's jumping fast. Oh, okay. I got one. Oh man, I really hope I don't die. This is it. I think we're gonna make it on our last bit of health. My heart is pounding so fast. Yes! Yes! We got it! Thank god. <laughs> Alright, cool. So, yeah, that's that's the boss fight. That That's pretty much the first level of this game. And it gives you the total, like, stage clear time. It took me 19 minutes, even though this Let's Play probably isn't going to be 19 minutes long, because my camera overheated, if you didn't notice that cut um, in the middle of it. So, uh, yeah. It was fun though. Uh, I really, really like this game. It's called Kamiko. It's on the Japanese eShop. See, this is the second level. It looks, uh, it looks a little different. But yeah. Anyway, that was Kamiko. It's on the Japanese eShop right now. So if you don't have a Japanese eShop account, I highly suggest you go make one and check it out. It's only five thousand yen, which translates to like five thousand or five thousand dollars, five dollars US. So it's not too much, and it seems like a really, really fun game. Definitely worth five bucks. Seems like there's a lot of replay value. So I highly recommend it. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please remember to like it and subscribe for more Switch videos just like this one. Thanks, and have a great day.